guys are getting us to buy. Hine matovu manaim, shevet achim gam yachad. Hine matovu Shevet achim gam yachad Hine matov Shevet achim gam yachad Hine matov umanayim Shevet achim gam yachad Hine matov umanayim Shevet Achim Kam Yachad. Folks, let me just say before we begin, welcome once again. I'm Rabbi Ornstein. I'm the rabbi here at Congregation Ohav Shalom. It is really a pleasure to have everyone here today as a family and friends, bringing Ren into the loving arms of her family and into the loving arms of her Jewish family as well. This is really a great mazel for all of us, uh, a great simcha, a great source of joy for all of us as well. You know, the tradition tells us, Dor le dor yishabach ma'asecha. Uh, taken from Psalm 145, those words are translated as, from generation to generation, we praise the works of God. We praise all that is in the world as a result of the cheol amim, of the one who is the source of all life, of all creation as well. The dor vador, the idea that we pass things down, and we literally pass babies down from generation to generation, is a very powerful one, both substantively and symbolically as well. Because what it says, what reminds us, is that Judaism isn't merely about who we are in a particular moment. It's about where we come from. And it's about who we are in the context of those who love us, in the context of our history, of our people's life, and in the context of humanity as well. For Jews, everything is like a tree. We have roots, we have a trunk, we have branches. Our past our present and our future. And so when a child comes into the world, that child's life isn't simply that child's life. It is his or her life in the larger setting of the life of his or her family, the life of his or her Jewish community, the life of his or her nation, our American nation, the United States, and the life of humanity as well. And to signify and symbolize this idea of moving from generation to generation, we're now going to have um, Ren's aunts and uncles uh, literally pass her down from generation to generation. Oh, say, Folks, those who were able to remain standing out of honor for the sacred moment, out of honor uh, for the baby, please do so. If you need to be seated, we certainly understand that. So welcome once again. The door of Ador. The door of Ador. From generation to generation, we praise God for new life. We praise God for the continuity of our community, of our people, of our families as well. Once again, to mark this idea of Ren coming into the arms of uh, each of the generations of her family, each of the generations of our Jewish people as well, I'm going to ask her grandparents um, one set at a time to come forward to do some special readings. Let me ask uh, Mark and Marlene to come forward at this time. May your eyes sparkle with the light of Torah and your ears hear the music of its words. May the space between each letter of the scrolls bring warmth and comfort to your soul. 
May the syllables draw holiness from your heart. heart. And may, may the holiness be getting and soothing, and soothing to, you to you and all God's creatures. creatures. May, may your study be passionate and meaning, bear more, more meanings until life raises itself to you as a dazzling wedding feast. And, and may your conversations, even of the commonplace, be a blessing to all who listen to your words and, and see, see the, the Torah, Torah glowing on your face. Now I'm going to ask Phyllis and Lewis to come forward for a special reading, a special blessing for their granddaughter. <laughs> we pray <clears throat> that when Rangoldi draws inspiration from the examples of her foremothers, from Eve the hope to choose life and sustain it after paradise was lost, from, from Noah's, Noah's wife, wife, the nurturing, nurturing qualities and patience to be, to be a steward for Earth's creatures. From, from Sarah, the faith to follow a dream into wilderness and to believe the impossible is possible. From, from Leah, endurance and perseverance, perseverance in the face of loneliness. From, from Miriam, the ability to be outspoken in her views even when they, they are unpopular. unpopular. From, From Deborah, Deborah the, the self-esteem self that enabled her to rally and, and lead resistance and to, to take pride in her achievements. achievements. And, from and from Yael, the courage, the courage to do what she knows she must do. Thank you. Thank you to the grandparents. Cousins, please come forward. Hannah, Sam, and Noah, you'll begin first, okay? You cousins stay over there. Please cousins stay over there. Yeah, Listen to the mustn'ts, child. Listen to the don'ts. Listen to the shouldn'ts, the impossibles, the won'ts. Listen to the never has, then listen close to me. Anything, anything can, can happen, happen, child. Anything, anything can, can be. be. Natasha, Elisa, Alexa, and Maria. Please guess. Come. There is a voice inside of you that whispers all day long. I feel that this is right for me. I know that this is wrong. No teacher, preacher, parent, friend, or wise man can decide what's right for you. Just listen to the voice that speaks inside. So we come to the center of our ceremony, the most important part of it, which of course is Ren's naming. Remember, of course, that in our Jewish tradition, every person receives a special name that person's name and the name of her parents, thus symbolizing once again, signifying once again, the continuity of the Dorot, the continuity of generations, and the importance of living not only in our own moment, but recognizing the moments and the people and the great heritage that go before us as well. So I'm gonna ask David and Robin to come forward at this time to explain to us a little bit about the name, and then I'm going to do a very unique um, Hebrew and English naming out of the Sephardic, the Spanish and Portuguese Jewish tradition, which um, calls forth the name of this little girl um, and evokes all the names of the great ancestors, the great female heroines of the Jewish people in times past. Well, this time we didn't make you wait. The pandemic did, but thankfully not too long. A mere 26 months from when we welcomed Miles Jacobs to the world, we welcomed Rand Goldie. So here we are together, feeling immeasurably grateful to be joined in person by close friends and family in accordance with CDC rules. Who would have ever thought we would say that at a Simchabat? And immensely thrilled that more family and friends are joining us virtually. Thank you. Thank you just doesn't seem like enough. Our hearts are full, our hearts are happy. Thank you for sharing your time and your love with Ren and our family. We are the luckiest. 
In Jewish tradition, naming a newborn has great significance. As we may have learned way back in Hebrew school, the Midrash explains that every person has three names that create us. One given by one's parents, one that others call her, and one she acquires herself. In choosing the names Ren and Goldie and Nechama Yehudit, we therefore took the first step in shaping our daughter's identity. Ren was the eighth name on the first list that David and I looked at as we knew right away it would be fitting for our little girl. And the Wren symbolizes action, accuracy, watchfulness, and enthusiasm for life. We follow the Jewish tradition of naming Wren in memory of special family and friends who are no longer with us so they may be remembered and honored by her new life and purpose. Wren's W comes from my maternal grandfather, William, known to me and his grandchildren as Grandpa Bill. Grandpa Bill was responsible for the family settling in Albany, moving with Grandma Ethel in 1947 to take a position as an attorney with the state. He left an educational and professional legacy that has always stayed with me. Ethel and Bill's home in Albany was the center for our extended family growing up and the source of much of my Jewish core. I spent countless Shabbos there soaking in their Orthodox Judaism, abiding by the rules like waiting three hours to have ice cream after Shabbat dinner, tasting countless Jewish delicacies like tongue and pickled herring, walking to synagogue on scorching hot or freezing snowy Saturday mornings, and relaxing away the afternoon playing with Legos until I could turn the TV back on. For me, Passover as well will always be linked in my heart and memories to their home and to Grandpa Bill at the head of the table. I can still picture in my mind 30 years later the vision of him speed reading in Hebrew through the middle sections of the Haggadah because we weren't allowed to skip a word and my joy at being one of the few at the table capable of keeping up and following along. Wren was actually born the morning before Passover began this year. As you may know, Robin was scheduled for a surgical birth, so we were prepared at the hospital with boxes of matzah, wine, and Miles allowed us to borrow his toy Seder set. Thank goodness. But that morning, Robin was taken back to the operating room to prepare while I waited for my invitation to join her and meet our daughter. When I entered the room, and was ushered to Robin's side, she was understandably anxious and a bit out of sorts. She immediately asked me to sing to her. Naturally, we started with some of Miles' favorites, including renditions of Twinkle Twinkle and Old MacDonald Had a Truck. Suddenly, my mind went blank and I couldn't think of anything else. The next thing I knew, I was singing the Seder songs. Chagat Ya, Kilo Noah. This set Robin at ease so much, she actually asked the anesthesiologist if he had given her something, medication to relax. That afternoon, when our doctor came to check on Robin and Wren, she mentioned in her 30 plus years of practice, she had never experienced that amazing impact of a husband's song and loved it. Grandpa Bill passed away soon after my bar mitzvah, a celebration he was not expected to be alive for. His cancer diagnosis a few years before made seeing him in the crowd as I was chanting Torah all the more meaningful. It reinforced to me what we wish Wren to inherit, a commitment to family, to Judaism, and to lifelong learning. Wren's middle name, Goldie, is in memory of my maternal grandma, Gertrude, or Grandma Grapefruit, as we affectionately called her. She really did like grapefruit. She was quite a woman. She loved her children and grandchildren beyond measure. I affectionately remember my grandmother as caring, hardworking, kind, stoic, and most of all, philanthropic all attributes we hope Wren carries throughout her life. My grandmother took great care of everyone, even before herself. She always cooked our favorite foods and had my favorite cookies sort of hidden in the cupboard. <laughs> I remember the smell of the air at night when I had sleepovers at their Brooklyn apartment. When they moved to Florida, we spent all our vacations and free time visiting them in the sunshine. Every time I'd get off the plane, my grandma and grandpa treated me to waffles and ice cream, a tradition we continue today in our family. No matter where we are, where we were, she made me feel loved and comfortable. My grandma had an extraordinary work ethic which continues to motivate me. She always had a job and she never complained about having to work even on weekends. She was philanthropic at her core. There was always a pushki in the kitchen or an event to be planned to raise money. She never had a lot, but what she did have, she gave away. It was never about the amount, rather the action of giving that continues to inspire our entire family. For all this and more, we are so excited that Wren carries my grandmother's legacy. As we mentioned Wren's Hebrew name, 
is Nechama Yehudit. Nechama Yehudit is a cherished name and, yeah, of my younger sister, Manda Jill, whose Hebrew name was also Nechama Yehudit. Mandy's spirit and soul will always remain a part of our family. And we love that her Hebrew name has been passed to both Miles. His Hebrew name, Menachem, is inspired by the same root and Ren. Mandy and I grew up as a pair, and we hope Miles and Ren will be as well. Ren, being a little sister is a great responsibility, and you're inspired by one of the best. It's the job of a little sister to pester, to annoy, and to bicker with your older brother when you're young, and to love, laugh, and always be there as you grow older. Robin and I cannot wait to watch the relationship you two develop. We wish for you, our sweet Ren, a beautiful life, knowing and finding love, as we have found as your parents, insatiable curiosity, passion, and purpose. And may you take inspiration from Hannah's determination and compassion, Natasha's focus and sense of style, Sam's loving nature and empathy, and of course, passion for the Yankees, Eliza's kindness and athleticism, Alexa's thoughtfulness and authenticity, Noah's playfulness and kindness, and Maria's creativity and strength. In closing, Ren, we offer you this blessing. We, we dedicate, dedicate our, our child to Torah, Torah to a never-ending fascination with study and learning, with a book she will never be alone. We dedicate our child to Chupa, to a never-ending growth as a human being capable of giving and receiving love, with a loving mate she will never be alone. We dedicate, we dedicate our child to Maasim Tobim, to a never-ending concern for family and community, justice and charity. charity. With, With care, care for others, she will never be alone. alone. Vizaketabiavetima, the old Pesim Hata, Vivanim, Uvanot Osher Behavod, Dishayim Ranani Ubun Beseva, Vachin Hiratzon, Venomar Amen. May God, who blessed our mothers, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, Miriam the prophet, and Abigail, Bless this beautiful little girl and let her name be called in Israel Nechama Yehudit, the daughter of Riva Michal and David Tzipor, Ren Goldie Morrison, at this favorable moment of blessing. Ren, may you be raised in health, peace, and tranquility to study Torah, to stand under the wedding canopy, and to do good deeds. May your parents merit to see you happy, Blessed with children, wealth, and honor, peaceful and content in their old age. May this be God's will. We all say, Amen. 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 And now, let's bring over the funny. Okay. Grandmas, can you guys come forward? On the four corners of every tummy, every spiritual, are the tzitzit, the fringes that remind each person, each Jewish person, of his or her membership in our great sacred partnership with God to bring good into the world. Basing itself upon the Torah, Jewish tradition tells us that looking upon the tzitzit, the fringes, should lead us to remember God called us to be a holy people. Our remembrance should then lead us to ask as a holy people. God's partners in Tikkun Olam, 
make you the world better. Robin, at your and David's wedding, you wore this talit, which belonged to Mandy, to honor her memory and her legacy at that precious moment of transition and celebration in your lives. Today, in this precious moment of transition, as all of you, Ren's family, bring her into the covenant of the people of Israel, your family will once again wrap yourselves in Mandy's talit, on forth her memory and legacy, and making her loving presence be felt in the midst of this celebration with all of you, family, friends, and community. Ren, may all those things that were and that continue to be outstanding and beautiful about your Aunt Mandy be your enduring spiritual inheritance. May you be blessed with her memory, and may all those people in your life, near and far, who care and love for you, help you to grow as a great person, as a committed Jew, and as a leader in the world. Can we all say Amen. Amen. Folks, this is a time of great joy. It's a time for us to celebrate the simple fact of life as a great celebration and miracle. As the Talib is wrapped around the end of her family, will you wish to join me in the Southern Chariot? The blessing thank you not for helping us to reach this special occasion. We welcome you so. Baruch, we praise you, God, the ruler of the universe, and thank you for keeping us in life, for sustaining us and enabling us to reach this holy time, this holy day, this holy celebration. We all say, Amen. And I'm going to add something to you. I'm going to ask all of your loved ones to, as much as they can, place their hands on your head, your arms, your feet. <laughs> As we offer your kaftonim, the priestly and parental blessing, the blessing of peace. Yesimei Elohim kesarav mikal achel v'leyah, may God give you the blessings of our four mothers, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, and by Yesim Elohim kefrayim v'chim enashem, may God give you the blessings of our ancestors, kefrayim v'nashem. Yivarecha v'nai v'yishmarecha, may God bless you with her. May God cause the light of God's face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up God's face to you and grant you and all of us the gift of shalom, the gift of peace, and we all say. Amen. Amen. Folks, before we say Borit Radgatha, a blessing over a cup of wine, celebrating the four quarters of the most traditional Jewish thing to draw off the meat. I just want everybody to notice the beautiful Jewish star, which is on a necklace on 